Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and after a decent break, we're back with the fourth episode of our Pokemon Heart Gold Random Card Challenge. In the last episode, we took down Chuck, Jasmine, and Price to earn three more gym badges and started dismantling Team Rocket in Goldenrod City. Today, we're going to be attempting to finish off their vast network and going after the final Johto gym badge. Before we can get around to battling Team Rocket members, though, we've got to face off with our rival in the underground. Silver's got five team members at this point, so we have to draw five cards for this one. Our team for the fourth rival battle is going to be made up of Poliwhirl, Eevee, Weepin' Bell, Seeking, and Vulpix. That could make things seriously difficult. Silver's whole team will be fully evolved, and we've only got a single final stage Pokemon. We're okay for typings with grass, water, and fire all covered, but the issues could fall more on the side of our team's overall quality. Electric types could cause some problems with two of our strongest team members being water types. We do at least have Weepin' Bell who resists electric type attacks, but against a fully evolved Pokemon it could still be difficult. Okay, let's check out the team and their movesets. First up we've got Tails the Vulpix. At level 34 the fire type has the moves Flamethrower, Confuse Ray, Will-O-Wisp, and Fire Blast. Up second is Regal the Seeking, who's also at 34 with Fury Attack, Blizzard, Aqua Ring, and Surf. Up third, we've got Spirali the Poliwhirl, who's at level 32 and equipped with the moves Surf, Hypnosis, Blizzard, and Body Slam. Next up, we've got Venus the Weeping Bell at level 30, and she's got the moves Acid, Poison Powder, Sleep Powder, and Solar Beam. Finally, we've got Darwin the Eevee, who's also at level 30, with his moveset featuring Quick Attack, Growl, Sand Attack, and Bite. Alright, this one's gonna be tough. Let's get into it. Silver leads off with Pachirisu, and we send in Vulpix first. The Electric Squirrel outspeeds Tails to connect with Discharge before she replies with a Flamethrower that deals some decent damage. Pachirisu goes for a Sweet Kiss, but this time Vulpix is ready. She dodges and fires back with the second Flamethrower. Knowing it's almost the end, Pachirisu endures, readying for another powerful hit. That leaves the Electric type with just a single hit point remaining, and on the following turn he connects with Sweet Kiss, confusing Tails. The confusion causes Vulpix to hit herself, and not wanting to lose any more health, we make the switch out to Eevee. A discharge aimed for Tails hits Darwin after the switch, but he gets in close and lands a quick attack, scoring us the first knockout of the match. Our rival goes out to Raikou next, so that makes things a little difficult. The legendary Pokemon starts by hitting Darwin with Spark, but the normal type spins and flicks sand up into its eyes. Raikou then fires well wide of the mark with Thundershock before Eevee sends more sand right at the Thunder Pokemon. Unfortunately, a second Thundershock finishes off Eevee, tying up the match. Venus comes in next, and after Raikou misses with Spark, she has the perfect opportunity to counter, but fails to connect with Sleep Powder. On the second turn, both Pokemon go for a repeat, but this time both attacks land. While the legendary Pokemon sleeps, Weeping Bell absorbs sunlight and fires off a powerful Solar Beam, but after attempting the same trick again, Raikou wakes up and roars, sending Venus right back into her Pokeball. The move also calls out Spirali, so it's really doubly bad. Staying in is a death sentence, so we go straight back out to Weeping Bell. A Thundershock hits Venus, but it's not very effective, and then we relive a classic double miss turn. After the misses, Spark and Sleep Powder both connect, so although Weeping Bell is feeling weak, she's up against a sleeping foe. Once again, Venus blasts Raikou with Solar Beam, leaving the Electric type weak. When the vacant looking Mouth Flower prepares to attack with Acid, our rival recalls Raikou in favour of. Moltres! Okay, Silver's really keeping us on our toes. The attack aimed at Raikou hits Moltres instead, and we call back Weeping Bell before the legendary Fire Flying type can do any damage. Moltres attacks repeatedly with Ancient Power as Seeking sets up Aqua Ring to attempt to gain back some hit points. A single Surf then washes away Moltres, leading Silver to send Raikou back into battle. The legendary Beast is fast asleep as Regal sends a wave crashing into it, scoring Seeking another knockout. Our rival sends in Leafeon next, and both Pokemon fire super effective attacks off target. Unfortunately, Leafeon is faster, and at the second time of asking, he hits the water type with Razor Leaf, wiping him out in one. Seeking took down a couple of legendary Pokemon before falling, though, so we've really taken full advantage of our single fully evolved Pokemon. Venus is up next, and although she's been thoroughly damaged by Silver's Raikou, she's still able to hit with Acid before being taken down by a quick attack. Vulpix then returns to battle and sends a Raging Flamethrower right at Leafeon, cutting him down and leaving Silver with only one. The final Pokemon out for our rival is Mightyena, and Tail spends a few turns working on him, leaving him burnt and confused. Then, on her last legs, Vulpix returns to her ball and Spirali comes back out. The water type uses Surf to finish off the badly damaged Dark type, earning us the win against all odds. 
This was an incredibly tough battle and took a lot of tries, but eventually we got past our rival. We're not done in Goldenrod yet, though. We've still got to tear apart Team Rocket and kick them out of the city. The very specific setup required so that we have exactly six cards left to draw when we reach red means that the only Rocket member we're going to be taking on is the big boss, Archer. The Rocket Executive has a trio of Pokemon on his team, so we've got to draw three cards for this one. Our team is going to be made up of Venonat, Dugtrio, and Bulbasaur. Once again, that's not a very powerful team, and there are a few glaring weaknesses. This team of three has two Pokemon weak to Fire, Flying, Ice, and Psychic. That is absolutely less than ideal. It wouldn't be too much of an issue with a strong team, but with an average base stat total south of 350, we could easily be failing the challenge right now. Let's see if our movesets inspire any more confidence. Starting off with Phil the Bulbasaur. At level 38, the Grass and Poison type is equipped with the moves Seed Bomb, Synthesis, Strength, and Double Edge. Gorse the Dug Trio is three levels behind at 35, and he's got Dig, Sucker Punch, Shadow Claw, and Earth Power. Finally, we've got Radar the Venonat, who's also at level 35, and he's got the moves Psybeam, Swagger, Sleep Powder, and Signal Beam. Alright, let's give this a go. The Rocket Executive sends out Swampert first, and we lead off with Bulbasaur. So, yeah, that works. Swampert starts the battle by slamming into Phil with a bone-shattering takedown that crits the Grass Star, leaving him broken and struggling to stay on his feet. The recoil hurts Swampert a small bit too, but not nearly as much as the Seed Bomb that Bulbasaur manages to fire back. I'm honestly not sure if Phil needed that to be a critical hit, it is quite effective after all, but it certainly did not hurt. Swampert faints, giving us the very early advantage. When Archer sends in Ninjask, we recall Phil and replace him with Radar the Venonite. I swear to god I had something for this. Never mind. After getting slashed by Ninjask and then avoiding a screech, Venonat uses Swagger to confuse and raise the attack power of the speed boosted buck. That pays off immediately as Ninjask flies headfirst into the ground before Psybeam further lowers his health. Still shaken from the attacks, Ninjask makes his way back into the air before flinging himself into the window of the Radio Tower's observation deck. Radar locks on and hits with Psybeam yet again, scoring the knockout and leaving Archer in the danger zone with only one Pokemon left standing. That final team member is Marowak, but hot off an unexpected demolition, Radar lands a direct hit with Sleep Powder, putting his foe briefly out of commission. That's our cue to switch out, just to make sure that our whole team plays a part. Gorse the Dug Trio enters the battle and fires off a couple of Earth Powers that hit Marowak hard, waking him up. The retaliatory thrash weakens Dug Trio, but he uses his speed to get off another Earth Power, leaving Marowak in one-shot range. The ground-type face-off comes to an end, with Gorse surviving on one hit point from Thrash and countering with a final Earth Power that knocks out Marowak, handing us the win. Not only did we defeat Archer, we took down the Rocket Executive without losing a single team member. Phil, Radar, and Gorse have earned a spot in the Random Card Challenge Hall of Fame, and I have proven that Archer is unquestionably not my supervisor. I wasn't feeling too great when I drew that team, but once again this challenge has shown that every Pokémon can have value. Venonat is a repeated overperformer in this series. Anyway, with Team Rocket cleared out of Goldenrod, we can make our way back to Mahogany through the Ice Path and into Blackthorn City. This is where our final Johto Gym battle will take place, which is pretty damn quick considering we're only in Episode 4. There's still a whole lot of game left to play though, so let's draw a team of four. It looks like we're going to be using Parasect, Golduck, Mr. Mime, and Goldeen. That's a pretty excellent draw for this challenge where we should be able to cover our weaknesses pretty well. Three fully evolved Pokemon and Legendary Random Card Challenge Season 1 alum Goldeen, this is a very solid quartet. I know technically in Galar and Domino City, Mr. Mime evolves into Mr. Rhyme and Mr. Time respectively, but we're in Johto now, so he's fully evolved. Unlike Tangela, who I claimed was in the last episode, and Scyther, who I said the same about in a random episode challenge video. Look, I really easily forget future generation evolutions, especially when I'm not a big fan. Anyway, let's have a look at the team. First up, we've got Marcel the Mr. Mime, who's at level 38 with the moves Psychic, Thunder, Magical Leaf, and Hyper Beam. Not much of a classic Mr. Mime moveset, Marcel's all about diverse attacking moves. Next up, we've got Bishop the Goldeen at level 41 with the moves Waterfall, Aqua Ring, Return, and Horn Drill. Oko moves are always nice to have, especially when it's on our ace. Up third is Champy the Parasect, who's at level 38 and equipped with Cross Poison, Spore, Slash, and x -Scissor. Finally, we have Panfilo the Golduck, who's at level 38 with the moves Surf, Screech, Confusion, and Blizzard. I was really struggling with nicknames at this point, well, since like the third Pokemon I nicknamed, and asked my girlfriend what she'd call a pet duck, and she came up with Panfilo pretty much immediately, so here we are. 
Okay, for the final time in Johto, let's get into the gym battle. Claire sends in her Flygon for starters and we lead off with Goldeen. Good solid matchup. The Bespectacle Dragon begins by going for Super Sonic and Goldeen dives underwater to dodge the attack. When she returns to the surface, she sends a waterfall flooding towards Flygon which connects, chunking away more than half of her hit points. While Goldeen is focused on attack, it allows the Mystic Pokemon to set herself and aim Super Sonic so it lands on the second attempt. Bishop's confusion leads to her swimming headlong into the side of the pool and to add, well, injury to injury, Flygon hits with Dragon Breath. Goldeen manages to break through confusion to fire a second gushing waterfall, crashing down on Flygon though and that's enough to earn us the first win of the match. Goldeen and Sea King have now combined to take down Raikou, Moltres and Flygon in this episode. That's pretty damn impressive from the duo. When Claire sends in Alakazam, there's really no point in switching out. We plump for Horn Drill in the hope that Alakazam decides against attacking, but alas, the Psychic type uses Psychic, which is just painfully predictable. That knockout shouldn't even count. We send in Champy the Parasect next, and after handily taking a Psycho Cut, she puts Alakazam to sleep with Spore. That was really just to play it safe. Champy's a bit of a beast, and I was pretty sure her Xizzer would do the job in one, but better safe than sorry and all that. The stab bug move does end up one-shotting Alakazam, who never even saw it coming. When Claire sends out Dodrio, we really have to switch out right away because Parasect isn't too keen on taking a flying-type attack. We bring in Panfilo the Golduck, who watches on as Dodrio sharply raises her speed and accuracy before picking a spot and destroying the flying-type with Blizzard. Claire sends in her final Pokemon Wigglytuff, and wanting to show off our whole team, we swap Golduck for Mr. Mime. Wigglytuff rolls herself into a ball to raise her defense, and Marcel psychically lifts that Wiggly Sphere into the air and then repeatedly slams her into the battlefield below. Two-door Cinema Club ring in her ears, Wigglytuff is dazed but manages to get close enough to land two hits on Double Slap, but that's it. Mr. Mime's psychic throws her back and when the dust settles, she's in full-on spirals for eyes mode. The victory over Claire, plus a quick pop quiz, earns us the Rising Badge and with that we're ready for the Pokemon League. That will be starting up in the next episode though. Even though this was only three battles, I feel like we got a lot done today. I hope you enjoyed and are ready for what will surely be a disastrous Elite Four run. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.